Polo have just dropped two new watches, the Pacer and the Pacer Pro. And what's really cool about these is the fact that they are really breaching the gap between price and performance. We're seeing a lot of features in these watches, especially in the Pro, that you would only see in much higher end watches with a much higher price tag. Today we're going to have a look at the differences between them both, how they compare against other watches in the Polar lineup, as well as just other watches in general. I'm going to mainly focus on the Pacer Pro because they're both pretty similar, but when one has a feature and one doesn't, I'll let you know so you'll know all about both watches. So firstly, I'm going to start off with a few cool features in the watches. And I'd say one of the big ones for me is it comes with an MIP MIP display, and that stands for memory and pixels. Don't ask me what that means or how it works because I don't have a clue. But what I can tell you is that it works really well. And it definitely is a step up, if not a few steps up from what we've seen from previous Polar watches. And you can really tell that it's brighter and it has more clarity than what we saw before. And you can definitely tell that when you're out on the roads running, or just outside obviously in general in bright light. But the thing that's really cool about a MIP display, and it's gonna make them perfect for smartwatches, so I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this tech in smartwatches in the future, is the fact that it is really bright, but it's also really efficient. So smartwatches obviously can't have a huge battery in them because you don't want them to be heavy. And the cool fact is that a MIP display uses 50% less energy, or is 50% more efficient, whichever one works best with you, than an OLED display. So you're getting a really good, bright, crisp display that's really efficient. So as I said before, perfect for smartwatches. One thing really worth knowing that happens with all Polar watches, and I think it's because it generally gives them better battery life, but they always come dim out of the box. And what I mean by that is they're set to the lowest screen brightness as they come out of the box. So jump through the settings, whack that up to high because to me, in my personal opinion, it's well worth it having a screen that's really bright. I'd, I'd lose a few hours battery for that feature. So it's up to you, but it's worth noting that it comes dim out of the box. And then above that MIP display, you've got Gorilla Glass 3 as a protection layer. We all know what Gorilla Glass is, the third iteration of it, it's just more scratch proof, it's brilliant stuff. I mean, you actually have a pretty hard time scratching these these days. It's like a third thinner. Don't hold me to that because I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it's definitely a thinner piece of glass for the same protection, if not better protection. So obviously what that's going to do is it's going to make these watches lighter. And that actually moves on to a really interesting point. And when you get these watches straight out of the box, they feel super light. They almost feel too light. You know, you expect an expensive watch to be heavy. And it's just something that we need to chop and not think about because especially for a sport watch, you don't want anything heavy on your wrist, especially on the extremities of your arms. It sounds really silly, but when you wear this, you almost forget you have it on. And it's almost like comparing it to a light cycling helmet. When you suddenly wear your first light cycling helmet or a light pair of glasses, you just instantly feel the difference and it just feels like you're not wearing them, which is what you want from a sport watch probably spoken about that for too long but the fact that these are about 40 grams each which is crazy light is a fantastic thing in my eyes now if you could look under the hood of this little watch you could see that it is packing quite the punch especially at this price point so comparing this to the polar vantage m2 which is currently out currently sitting at roughly the same sort of price point you're getting seven times more ram and twice the processor power in this little watch so it is considerably faster really noticeable when you're scrolling through the menus it's it's rapid it's almost like before you've even pressed the button it's on the next screen which is cool hopefully you can see that there if not i'll zoom in and do a little close up when the watch is working hard it can do it easily now so there's no lag when you're really pushing this watch to the limit just a really nice feature really nice update especially at this price point Moving on to the battery life of the watch, you can get seven days battery out of this in your sort of general smartwatch mode. So that's gonna be connected to your smartwatch, pinging notifications up and through, as well as having your heart rate on. So you're gonna get seven days constant tracking of sleep data, your day-to-day -day life, but that's not with GPS. Then in full GPS mode, where you've got all the bells and whistles blaring, so you've got your screen on, you've got the best GPS setting on, you've got the heart rate sensor on, that's gonna give you 35 hours of use with that full tracking. But then if you're going for an extended holiday or you need it for extended period of time for an expedition or something along those lines, you can turn the heart rate monitor off and tone down the frequency of the GPS and that's gonna give you 100 hours of GPS usage. So if you need that, then it's got that capability too, which is really nice to see. 
And as we're speaking about the battery, it does come with, let me just grab this, a new charger. So you can see the positives and the negatives to this because if you're already invested in loads of Polar watches, then you're not gonna be able to use all those old chargers and charge them up around your mate's house. But it is fundamentally a very similar functioning. It's obviously not got that big round flower charger that we're used to, and it's just magnetic, really nice click-in functionality. I mean, I understand why every smartwatch brand needs its own proprietary charger, but it is just annoying that they can't all just agree on one and we can all charge from the same thing. I mean, maybe one day, but not yet. Moving to the back of the watch, we've got a new heart rate monitor. Now, Pilar are known for doing heart rate monitor stuff right. I think they were basically the first people, maybe even the first people in the world to even make a heart rate monitor. So that says, says a lot about them, really. This is where I think, especially at this price point, I'm gonna say this a few times, things like this are gonna make a big difference to other watches in a similar sort of category because this heart rate monitor is good. It's got 10 LEDs in the back of it with various colors and wavelengths, which are gonna penetrate your skin and different skin tones and stuff better to get better data. And then you've got four receivers that basically receive that light data back, which is how it somehow tracks your heart rate. That's about as much as I could tell you other than the fact that it works pretty well. So, well, I suppose I could tell you one more thing. They've lost the bumps. It's just a new looking heart rate monitor as well. It's flat, which we haven't seen before. So probably doesn't help you much, but you know that as well now. Sport profiles, oh my golly gosh, it's got loads of them. So I think Polar have got like 130 individual sport profiles that obviously range from your big hitters like running, cycling, road cycling, gym work. The, all the big ones are on there, obviously. And it goes down to ridiculous stuff like, I don't even know, it probably does Olympic ice skating, shooting, if that's a thing. But either way, it's probably on here. And you can choose 20 of those profiles your favorite ones. If you're lucky enough to do 20 sports and you've got that much time, you can have 20 of them preloaded on the watch and they're really easy just to favorite in and out and you can choose, I mean, who needs 20 sport profiles? But yeah, you've got that if you need it. So everything I've just spoken about is in both of the watches, but now I'm gonna talk about the features that are different between the two, just so we get some nice clarity in why this is a little bit more money than this basically. And I'm gonna break them down into what I think is most important even though that might not be the same for you. But either way, the big one for me is the fact that the Pro comes with mapping. So it comes with turn-by-turn -turn navigation and that's all run through Komoot, which is a brilliant thing because I've been using Komoot for years and I love it. It's a really, really good platform. But besides the point on that, obviously mapping, I don't need to explain it, but it's gonna be great for anything from hikes, cycles, runs. If you need a map to help you get to where you're going or doing the route that you're doing, then you need to get the Pro because the other one doesn't know it. The Pro comes with an added barometer, which helps with all that climbing and elevation data, as well as hill splits and things like that. So if that's big for you, then again, the Pro is gonna be the better choice. The watches actually come with quite a different finish. So the Pro actually comes with this nice metal bezel, but the biggest thing for me is the fact that the buttons are actually quite different. Well, they're obviously the same button layout, but the Pro comes with metal buttons and they've got a much more, not much more, but they just feel a little bit more positive when you click them rather than the plastic ones. Maybe it's literally just a difference in the material, but you get a little bit more grip and a little bit more of a satisfying click with the Pro. It's a very small thing, but it's worth mentioning. And then the actual straps are different. Don't worry if you think this Pro is a one piece strap because some watches have been like that in the past and then you have a damaged strap and then the watch is completely defunct. But this is definitely not the case because you can swap the straps out by pulling this pin out and replace it with one exactly the same, or it comes with a little converter that you, means you can swap it out and put any strap on like you can with the normal one. So this just has a little bit more option for that sort of active wear look, and this one's just got more of a basic, you know, the pin one that we see on most watches. The Pro comes with a few more little features as well, so it comes with running power, just a nice fun fact if you're more, probably more of an experienced runner, not that you'd have to be, but those extra metrics that a lot of people who want a really basic watch just to record their running won't even look at, but it's an extra bonus to have in the Pro anyway. And it also comes with muscle load metrics, which again, similar to what I just said, not everyone will want to see this, but if that's something that you're wanting to see, it comes with it. And lastly, this one also just comes with a compass, which is just a bonus if you wanna know which way you're looking. And also they're obviously different in price. So the Pacer is 169 pounds, and the Pacer Pro is 259 pounds. So you can really tell that they are hacking back at that price quite a lot 
and you are getting quite a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, the Pro definitely looks very much like a Vantage V2, which is a lot more money. And I mean, it's, it's like the baby brother of the Vantage V2. In fact, I think it, it looks better. It's less bulky. Might not do everything that the V2 does, but it's getting very close for a lot less money. And I mean, on that subject, one of the things these don't have are touch screens. Now, that is no biggie for me because I'm not really a massive fan of touch screens on smartwatches as it is. Unless you've got really detailed maps that you can hover around with a map, which these don't have. And to be honest, there's only a few watches that have that sort of map system where you need to be able to move around easily with a touch screen. These just don't need it. They're better off without it. A cheaper touch screen is more annoying. You have a shower, you go swimming, and all the data fields change because they're moving around in the water, and you've got to lock the watch. It's just nicer not to have it, if you ask me. If you don't need it, don't have it. If you're used to the Polar interface and ecosystem, then these watches basically work exactly the same, so you won't be surprised with anything new and different particularly, but obviously you've got these two up and down buttons where you can scroll through these little widgets, shows you activity levels and heart rates, last activities, nightly recharge, all this sort of stuff that we're used to, weather data. Then you've got the bottom left button that works as a back button as well as the menu button, so you can click that. It takes you through various, all the different options that you've got on the watch, as well as Strava live segments, which is something that these watches are both capable of doing, which is really cool. Fuel-wise, all the, all the stuff that we're used to, all these watches basically have. You've got all the tests on there, walking. This is actually something that this has got a cycling test, the pacer doesn't, which basically tests your cycling metrics so you can see if you're getting more powerful or not. The normal one doesn't, so that's one difference in this that I almost missed. Uh, running test, fitness test, tests your VO2 max, stuff like this, they've both got it. Also two very small little features that I might tell you about. You can lock the watch by holding the top left button, put it into lock mode, means if you're doing any sort of sport where you might accidentally pause it, press the buttons, it's not gonna do that was a much bigger feature with the touchscreen because it was much easier to do whatever the hell that was going to happen when you're in an activity and then hold it again to unlock it. Nice feature if you want it. And if you want to force sync the watches, you can just hold down the bottom left hand button, the back button, and it's just going to force sync to your phone, which is just nice if you want to get any sort of data from the watch to the phone and vice versa. You can just hold that down and it's going to force it to do it basically. Both of the watches come with Training Load Pro. The way I like to put this is the fact that it just makes training easy. So you just have to look at your watch and it kind of tells you whether you're under training, whether you're maintaining your training, whether you're overreaching or whether you're even detraining yourself. So it, without having to think about it too much, your watch is basically going to say chill out or get out of your ass and do something, which is pretty nice. Maybe not if you don't want to do that, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. As with most smartwatches these days, both these watches can obviously track your sleep data. So that's gonna track everything from how long you've been asleep to it being light, deep, resting eye movement, all the different sorts of sleep you're gonna have. These watches will record that. It does it as well as all the other Polar watches. And it's worth noting that it's nice to look at it in, you can see it on the watch face, you can see all the data on the watch face, but when you go onto the Polar Flow app, you can just see all this data on a bigger screen. And that goes to all your GPS and running and cycling data, you can just see you can just see stuff better on a big phone. Or even on, you can log on to the computer with the Polar Flow app, which is cool. So you can see it on a, as big a screen as you want. Both the watches are rated WR50, which basically stands for the fact that you can go in water with them up to 50 meters. So they're gonna be absolutely fine in the shower, in the bath, and probably more importantly, when you go swimming with them. So no troubles there. And lastly, you can set the watch up to have all your smartphone notifications basically pop up on the screen. Worth noting that you can have that completely on or off if you're the sort of person that wants to not get your phone out and look at your watch. Easy, if you don't wanna be disturbed anymore, you can turn that off. And if you're into listening to music, you can listen to music via the watch through the watch from your phone, if you see what I mean. But you can't store music on the watch itself. So, I think that explains it enough. You can change the tracks, pause music through the watch, but you have to have your phone or a music player near you for that to happen. So a pretty nice move from Polar. Really like the fact these paces are packing a big bang for their buck. I've said it a few times and I'll say it again. But what do you think to them? Is it gonna be your next watch? Do you like them, do you not? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.